Today on Blissey Burgers, I'm going to be recreating the grandfather of all smash burgers, the working man's friend double cheeseburger out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Let's get going. So this burger is so iconic, has so much history. A man named Louis Stamatkin immigrated to the US from Macedonia as a child in 1907. He ends up in Indianapolis, grew up near the railroad, saw a need, need to feed hungry workers, opened up Belmont Lunch and served them some fantastic, very affordable hamburgers. And I think some beer and a few shots as well. In 1922, the railroad workers went on strike and Lewis continued serving them lunch even though they didn't have the money to pay. He just let them run tabs. And it captured the attention of a local newspaper who called him the, work, the friend of the working man. And eventually the railroad workers called him the working man's friend. When Lewis died, his sons took over the restaurant and to pay homage to their father, they renamed it working man's friend. Let's start making this burger. We're gonna kick it off with the buns. So this is a very simple unseated hamburger bun, but this burger has a club level meaning. It's got that piece of bread in the center, like the Big Mac and like the burger at Bob's Big Boy. This predates them. There's been this always this ongoing argument. He came up with it first. I think Lewis came up with it first. Now looking at the pictures, it looks like what they're doing is just slicing the top of the bun off to create that club level. And what my guess is, is like the first hamburger will have, you know, from the top bun and then the next will have, they'll shave off the bottom of the heel. So I'm just gonna take a knife and cut off the top of this bun. There we go. So I call this the grandfather of all smash burgers and this is actually what I like to call a smashed then smeared burger. Not unlike the Red Hot Ranch in Chicago, a lot of places do this and it creates a very thin, very lacy, very crispy burger. It's, it's just unbelievably good. So I'm using the flat top and I have it set for, it's like a medium high. Now the key, these, these are two three ounce meatballs. And the key to doing a really good, again, smashed and smeared burger is to let the meatball set on this flat top for a little bit to kind of get them warmed up and get that fat melted so it will smear really easy. This is 80-20 ground chuck. Now while these things are heating up, I have, it's four burner flat top. I have the two burners on the right turned on and the burners on the left are not turned on. And I'm gonna start a light toast. Looking at the, at the photos, it just looks like kind of a light toast on, on the buns. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and start the smash here. And then once it's smashed, I'm gonna pull this off to the side like this. And just continue doing that, like sliding it off. Let that grease kind of lubricate the spatula, so to speak. You can see how it's melted. This is what I want. Again, just slide that spatula off. If you try to pull it straight up, a lot of times that meat patty will come up with it. You don't want that to happen. Some kosher salt. This cook is going to happen very quickly. Okay, now what I'm looking for is these little holes to form and the oil, the grease to kind of bubble up through those holes. And it's telling me it's time to flip. And it's bonded, that's what you want. You want it to be literally stuck to this flat top. That's telling me we're gonna have an unbelievable crust. Ah. Immediately after the flip, I'm gonna put the cheese on. Again, very quick cook here. Buns look good, just nice light toast. 
So as that cheese melts, I'm going to take some shredded iceberg lettuce, put it on the bottom bun, a couple rings of thinly sliced onion, and a tomato. All right, first patty off and down. Look at that thing sizzling away. Wow. I'll take that club level, put it on top. Next patty up. And again, on top of that club level, gorgeous. So the condiments are very simple. We're just hitting this top bun with a thin layer of mayo. I'm going thin, but I still want it to go edge to edge. And there we have it. Working man's friend. And last but definitely not least, some nice pickle chips. And there we have it. Look at that. Now they also make mustard and ketchup available to their customers, but this is how it is served. This is, in my opinion, how it should be eaten. This is the original right here. And it's just so beautiful. I mean, I mean, looking at it, that golden, crispy, lacy, smashed and smeared burger. <laughs> Happy dance. <laughs> mm. Just think about the construction of this. I mean, we have two ultra, ultra thin beef patties, and then there's that club level. Why would Lewis do that? Lewis was trying to create an affordable lunch for the railroad, work, railroad workers. It's a tongue twister. And when you think about it, I mean, this restaurant's still open to this day, the working man's friend, but it lived through the Depression era. So just like the Depression burgers, Lewis was trying to make things affordable, a nice, good meal that didn't break the bank. And this club level piece of bread, is, it's filler, just like the onions on the Oklahoma onion burger, the, the rice flour that's added to the slug burger. It's to bulk it up and not have to hit the consumer with that, the price, you know, the, uh, of, of a big thick beef patty. And it's ingenious. And the genius is it makes it a killer burger. Ah. If you're in Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, check it out. I know it's on my list. It's, this burger's been on my list of to-dos for so long, and I'm really, really glad that I did it. This is just, it's a beautiful burger. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. If you're not subscribed, please hit that sub button. Make sure you ring the notification bell. If you like the video, thumb it up. See you in the next video. Cheers.